Hi, my name is uh, Dr. John Ruthven. I'm the author of a book I'd like to introduce you to called On the Cessation of the Charismata. This book uh, was written in response to a long-standing problem in uh, Christian theology, even Jewish theology for that matter, about the issue of miracles. And we think of miracles as being rare and strange and happening in places that are not well known, when in fact, that's not true. 55% of American doctors openly admit to seeing a miracle. 73% of them actually say that they believe that this sort of thing can happen and does happen. In the high 80s of percent, Americans generally believe that healing and other kinds of miracles uh, happen a great deal. In, in theology, there has been a a tendency ever since the Reformation to deny that this sort of thing happens. And you ask why? We have the expression, wonders never cease. Well, this is over against the conventional wisdom and theology that they have ceased. And why would people want to deny what so many people experience in their daily lives, or at least in their lifetime? This whole idea of miracles ceasing seems to have emerged during the time of Jesus when his opponents, the scribes, Pharisees, Jewish leaders of the time were threatened by the fact that Jesus went around doing a lot of healing. As a matter of fact, in the Gospel of Mark, 65%, two thirds of the space devoted to Jesus' public ministry are miracle stories. Jesus challenged this over and over by saying that the miracles that he performed was not simply his own attestation, but it was the very nature of his Father, God, to restore uh, and to bring people back into harmony with the nature that God had originally created. Despite this, by the time we get to the Reformation, there is a, a war going on between the Protestant reformers and the Roman Catholic Church. Both sides believed that miracles proved doctrine or proved sainthood when in fact they were the expression of a loving God seeking to heal and restore what had been destroyed. The contrast that is drawn by traditional Protestant theology is a contrast between written scripture once and for all delivered to the church versus ongoing miracles and prophecies which according to them necessarily adds to the text of scripture. This is utter nonsense. Miracles don't prove the gospel, they express the gospel. Prophecy uh, is not something that is adding to new scripture. Prophecy is the application of the doctrine once and for all delivered to the church in the New Testament. The contrast between the New Testament and recurring miracles is a false contrast. The New Testament itself says that miracles, healing, the gift of the Holy Spirit will continue. For example, 1 Corinthians 12, 6. It is the same God who energizes them all. That's referring to all of the gifts of the Spirit right in that context, three verses earlier. Energizes them all in everyone. That's a universal general statement about the activity of God and his uh, spiritual gifts. Paul also says in Romans 11:29. The charismata and the calling of God are not withdrawn. Your calling into salvation is not withdrawn, neither are the gifts of the Spirit. Now you say, well, maybe those are just some gifts of the Spirit and not others, ones that are non-miraculous. That's nonsense. Charismata, in the eight other contexts that that word is used in the New Testament, always refers to healing, miracles, and prophecy. That's the overall point that this book makes, and it also shows how it integrates uh, closely with the idea of the New Covenant. 
the new covenant fulfilled at Pentecost was quoted and explained in a shortened version when Peter says, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Spirit. For, and that for introduces a proof text or an Old Testament quotation, this promise is for you, your children, and those who are afar off. In that passage, Peter is quoting a larger scripture from Isaiah that says, I, even I, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. How explicit can it be? The spirit that I put upon you, singular, Jesus, and the words I put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth, nor depart from the mouths of your children or your children's children forever. That is the great promise of Jesus when he is introduced in all four gospels as the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. What he was doing there was fulfilling the promised covenant of Isaiah 59, 21, that he would fill us with the spirit of prophecy and the other gifts of the spirit, the prophetic word that goes out and declares healing, restoration, deliverance from demons, and all of the other panoply of gifts that God has given to his church. That's what this book is about. So the bottom line then is that the New Testament itself requires us to believe in continuing acts of God's power. Why? Because this promise or covenant is for you, your children, and those who are afar off. And what is that covenant? It is the Holy Spirit of prophetic gifting, not just speaking words, but speaking words of healing power that actually generate the miracles that so many people today attest to.